What is happening, boy? Turbo Toys here. But you can call me Turbo, and today. We're here. <laughs> Was you scared, boys? Well, I hope you've been following them buzzers because as we continue to take a look at Brody Lee's time as Luke Harper in WWE, we have ripping Elite Series 28. The era of Welch, Bray Wyatt, and of course, the family would not be complete with that Elite Series 29, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, the Wyatt family. Now, the Wyatt family were based on a cult similar to that of the Manson family, where the leader brainwashed his children with his sinister views and his calm persona. A character that Bray Wyatt probably plays way too good. But this should be the first time that we've got these fine-looking gentlemen in Elite form, so let's take a look. And as we look at the back of their boxes, we see that each man has their own individual write-ups. So please feel free to pause and read at your own pleasure. So as we take them out of the box, we can see that this is going to be a good one because they come with a ton of accessories. Luke Harper actually comes with a lantern that Bray always lights up and blows out before every entrance. And I always find it strange that when they walk back down to the ring, the lantern's always lit up again, lighting the way. How did they light it again that quick? But this one actually has a glow-in-the-dark feature, which is pretty cool. So if you've got these bad boys on display and you've always wondered what that thing glowing was, it's probably this lantern. And then we see here we have Eric Rowan with a rocking chair. Now, I can't remember, but didn't this rocking chair belong to Sister Abigail? But it does come with a few bits, so they do give you a guide, a build-by-numbers guide to help you build it. Here we see it built in all its glory. I kind of like how they've given us, instead of a build a figure, they've given us a build a chair. And um, what I like most about this is all these accessories in, in these three figures basically benefit Bray the most. And then he comes with his famous Lems mask. And I'm not being funny, but it's pretty freaky. And if you see a guy that's nearly like seven feet tall coming towards you in that, you would be scared. As we see our fearless leader, he comes wearing his fedora hat, which is white with the black trim and also very stylish. And then he also comes with a cloth's good Hawaiian shirt, which looks awesome. And if you told me I'd be getting one of these, you could sign me up to the White family any day. And that basically completes all the accessories that comes with these figures. Yeah, so as we turn our attention to the Eater of Worlds, we can see that the head scan has been made spot on with that overgrown and unkept look. It's pretty much how I look at the best of times. It's got a fine sculpt on the hair and the long beard. And it's a great capture of the way Bray's facial details are actually expressed. And that's something I think Mattel have always been great at with these Bray White head scans, like getting his facial expressions. And I was talking with other people about this, how basically every single scan on a Bray Elite is basically a home run. And with that being said, I want to give an honourable mention to the first time in the line Bray White basic figure. Because that figure won't be getting a review, but the head scan alone is a work of art. You see certain pictures of Bray, and this scan really captures the, the look of the early run with the White family. Yeah, I am actually hoping to do a fix-up and get this scan on Elite because it's absolutely wasted on this basic. Now moving on to the torso, it's a great sculpt for Bray, even though it's just a plain black vest. But you can't skip over the detail and the effort put into showing all of his tattoos. I think the combination within the colours of the grey dark ink really makes the designs and the figure stand out. With nothing too crazy going on with his white baggy trouser pants with his plain design, but topped off with a pair of alligator style boots. It's kind of hard to pick up. But yeah, totally, I'll rate this figure 100%. Like, let me know what you boys think. Now, on to the next. And that next one will be Luke Harper looking strange and deranged. Now, the first time we see Harper was in his debut match against Jason Jordan. He was going to win that match and be introduced as the first son of the Wyatt family. His scan shows him with that psychopathic brainwashed crazy face. And they've even added his tongue poking out. He looks like a mad trucker gone off the rails. I love the way the hair looks and he's got a decent sculpt on the beard. He comes wearing a classic entrance flannel shirt over his tank top with a dirty sweat patch on the chest as well as black bandanas for wrist wraps. A standard pair of classic blue jeans with the black handkerchief hanging out the back pocket and a standard pair of black boots. Yeah, this is a really great figure and a great representation of the big man. Here we see here a quick comparison with the Elite 35. Now, I can honestly say I love these figures both so much. I think they're two really good figures, but let me know which one you prefer. But now we move on to the six foot seven Eric Ryan looking scary in his lambs mask with his big ginger beard protruding out the bottom of the mask. Yes, Eric Ryan introduced as the second son of the Wyatt family. And as we take a quick look at that mask again, we see the fine sculpt, good detail and the big blue eyes. And then under that, we see the big red bearded monster. And at the time, I thought this was a fairly decent scan, but I must admit, ever since we've had Elite 66 out, it wipes the floor with this scan. But looking back at it now, like I would have loved to have seen a bit more anger in the expression. But with that being said, you can still tell who it is. So it ain't necessarily a bad thing. 
So, not much in the way of an attire other than a one-piece boiler suit, but the suit does have some great detail with the creases in the shoulders there and, and the moulded pockets. This is the go-to choice for customisers who make that nails custom. Glen Webbs is still my favourite. And then again, this one's just finished off with a pair of standard black boots. Harper and Rowan would go on to find success and capture the NXT Tag Team Championships, defeating Neville and Bo Dallas, who was filling in for Oliver Gray. But as for the Wyatt family, they would get called up to the main roster and they would make their debut by attacking Kane. And then they would go on to feud with the likes of certain superstars like John Cena, CM Punk, R-Truth and The Shield to name a few. Before disbanding and reforming from the years 2012 to the year 2017. During these years, the Wyatt family would add more stable mates to the group. Such as the likes of Daniel Bryan, Ron Strowman and Randy Orton. But in my opinion... Nothing beats the original Wyatt family. Their reign of fear and terror added quite exciting stories and promos and was one of the best things to watch on the product at the time. And hopefully boys you've enjoyed the look into Luke Harper aka Brody Lee's action figures plus all the success he's had under the WWE banner. For me personally it's been fantastic to do and I've really enjoyed it. But that's going to do it for this one. Don't worry about following the buzzers. Just make sure you follow me on Instagram at Turbo Toys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until the next video boys... I will see ya.